video is on Jesse Jackson, the civil rights leader. Jesse Jackson just announced that he had been diagnosed with Parkinson's, but it's actually been two years. That may seem a long time to actually wait to say something, but a lot of times with people that are diagnosed with Parkinson's, they're usually pretty sick by the time they're diagnosed. Um, for most of us, we have had problems, but they're like everyday problems. So th the signs that you have Parkinson's aren't always clear because they just seem like things that are part of other diseases. Um, and there is no definite test for Parkinson's. So I wanted to do a video on um, what I would say to Jesse Jackson because he's just diagnosed. The first thing I would say to him is that you have to reduce your stress level because that's going to make your Parkinson's much worse. You need to look at not only things that cause you stress but also people that cause you stress. So you might have to be faced with a lot of very like important decisions in the next six months. Number two, make sure that you refer to a movement specialist. A movement specialist is a neurologist that only deals with movement disorders. So you might be diagnosed and have been referred to a plain neurologist. And um, it's not that the neurologist isn't a good choice. It's just that the movement specialist, that's all they do. But you might find a, a, also find just a neurologist that has an interest in Parkinson's, and I believe that's what my neurologist has. I know that he has a father that had di was diagnosed with Parkinson's and several relatives. Number three, I would say start an exercise program immediately. You have lots of time to figure a lot of different things out. But, par but Parkinson's is something that pro can progress and most likely will progress. So there's nothing right now that they know of that can slow that progression as much as exercise. So things that are good for you would be things that initiate forced movement. That's because with Parkinson's we're very slow anyway, so if left to our own devices, we would just exercise real slow. So force exercise would be like bike riding with someone. Um, it would be like boxing. There's lots of Parkinson's boxing programs popping up. And let's see, another one would be dancing. That's what I do. So it can be something fun. And I know that you have a big family, so you might want to incorporate um, dancing in your um, plan. And of course, cardio. So number four, I would tell you that you're probably going to be referred to take medication. Um, you do have a little bit of choice in that. I don't know how long you've had your Parkinson's other than the two years that you stated. But like I said earlier in the video, by the time that we're diagnosed with Parkinson's, we've had it a long time. So, like me, you might be at the point where I didn't realize that I had it and I had just been making accommodation. So when I was diagnosed, I did need medication right away. But that might not be the case with you and you may not need medication for many years. Number five. This probably a lot of people will disagree with me because kind of like those two thoughts. One is that there's a lot of misinformation on the internet, so don't look up anything about Parkinson's. The other set of people, which are kind of like me, is that I want to learn all I can about Parkinson's so that I can be well educated and make decisions and not leave it all to the neurologist. You can't leave your decisions all to the neurologist, especially with this kind of disease that there's no cure. Okay, number six, be prepared for people's reactions. And it's not anyone's fault, but there's a lot of misinformation to do with Parkinson's. People don't really understand it 
other than it being something horrible because people shake all the time. And that's not really true. Um, there's 40% of the population of people with Parkinson's that don't shake or have a tremor. Or if they do shake, it's not due to the Parkinson's, it's due to the medication. But anyway, it's not only to do with that, it's more to do with a misunderstanding of Parkinson's. So um, people are either going to react too strongly or not have any reaction. That's kind of what I've, I've um, come across. So they either like don't know what to say to you um, or they act like you're going to die, but you can't die from Parkinson's alone. You can die from complications. Um, but it's, but like I said, it's either one way or the other. So you have to prepare yourself because you're going to deal with a wide range of reactions. And you can't let those reactions get to you. You have to still try and remain positive. So I think we're on number seven. My num number seven thing to say to you is that just to repeat a little bit of what I said in tip six, you're probably not going to die from Parkinson's. You're going to die from something else. Not to sound kind of morbid about it, but I just say that to say you still have to manage your health and make sure to choose a healthy lifestyle so that you don't get another disease that you're fighting along with the Parkinson's because that makes things really bad. Okay, number eight is reduce toxins in your life. And what I mean by that is that most likely um, they say that Parkinson's might have a, a um, genetic co component, component um, especially with those that have early onset Parkinson's like myself. It could also be environmental and um, due to like pesticides and uh, chemicals in the environment, things like that. So. I would say if you're not living a organic and a, um, a natural lifestyle that you might want to start making changes. Um, and there's a lot you can do in this area, like change over any um, cookware that you have that is like, um, what did they call it, like that, that coating that they put on it. Um, so that's not good to cook with and um, other things like uh, eating organically, fresh prepared meals, maybe cutting down on going out to eat. So yeah, generally there's a, a long list of things, so I won't go through it because uh, this video will be too long. And number nine, what I would say to you is that you're gonna start feeling that you're Parkinson's or treating your Parkinson's is like a part-time or full-time job and I say that because you have to think that there are a lot of things that you have to do to keep up on your Parkinson's and you have to think how are you going to handle that plus all the other responsibilities that you have so usually you can't handle all of it so this tips kind of like part partly kind of relevant to the stress. So if you think of your Parkinson's as a part-time or full-time job, you've got to think of like where you're going to cut things to make that fit. And the number 10 thing that I would say to you is that I'm sorry that you have Parkinson, 